Now let's discuss important politics after Reconstruction from 1865 to 1900. Ulysses S. Grant lead the nation to victory. He was an inexperienced president and had many scandals in his terms and that's really all you need to know about him. The election of 1876 was between Samuel J. Tilden and Rutherford V. Hayes, it is important because Tilden won the popular vote but not the Electoral College. Remember, the same thing happened with Andrew Jackson earlier. The problem was resolved by the Hayes-Tilden Compromise. Basically, Hayes got the presidency and Tilden who was supported by Southerners were promised removal of federal troops from the South. Thus, the Hayes-Tilden Compromise is attributed to officially ending Reconstruction. William McKinley defeated William Jennings Bryan and won the presidency in 1896. In 1898, the Spanish-American War happened. Cuba wanted independence from Spain, an effort which America supported. But America wanted to practice neutrality and stay out of it, but they were dragged into it anyway due to yellow journalism. Yellow journalism was the practice of making up stories to boost newspaper sales. For example, they made up a story about the sinking of the Maine, which was an American battleship. The Rough Riders were a superior cavalry unit that helped America win the war. The Treaty of Paris ended the war with Spain liberating Cuba and giving America Puerto Rico, Guam and the Philippines. So from the Spanish-American War, Cuba was freed and America gained Puerto Rico, Guam, and Philippines. Under McKinley, the U.S. experienced its own form of imperialism. It got Cuba, Guam, and Puerto Rico from Treaty of Paris. It also established a sphere of influence on China. At the time, all the world's superpowers like France, Japan, Germany, Britain and Italy had spheres of influence on China which meant they were pockets of areas where these nations could influence. McKinley's administration established an open-door policy which established a joint right for all superpowers to trade with and within China. A Chinese nationalist group called the Boxers wasn't happy with spheres of influence, so they started the Boxer Rebellion overthrowing the Peking Dynasty, which ruled China at the time. Boxers felt China was doing an injustice to its people with the open-door policy. The world's superpowers involved with the open-door policy came in and thwarted the Boxer Rebellion restoring rule of Peking Dynasty. Now let's enter into an era called Progressivism. The Progressive Era is made up of Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson. This era was a reaction against corruption of the Gilded Age. These presidents took a stance against what was wrong and worked for the common man. Journalists called muckrakers during the Progressive Era exposed shady actions of businessmen and politicians. For example, Ida B. Tarbell's History of the Standard Oil Company published in 1904 exposed the monopolistic tactics of oil companies. Also, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle of 1906 exposed dangerous working conditions of meatpacking plants in Chicago. Also during the Progressive Era is women's suffrage. The 19th Amendment was sent to Congress in the 1880s but wasn't ratified until 1920. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton were leaders of women's suffrage. Many women worked in factories for half as much money as men during the Industrial Revolution. By the late 1890s, all the civil rights blacks got during Reconstruction were taken away. Plessy v. Ferguson ruled separate but equal, which basically said segregation was legalized in society. This brought about Jim Crow laws. Since many rights were taken away from blacks, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People and National Urban League were created to fight for equality. However, people's opinion on the approach to fight for equality was different. For example, Booker T. Washington thought blacks should work to attain economic equality through hard work and not try to inflame white majority. He thought once economic equality was achieved, social and political equality would naturally follow. He believed in a long and gradual path to equality. W.E.B. Du Bois was president of the NAACP and thought blacks should be more aggressive in attaining equality. He wanted instant equality. Teddy Roosevelt, also known as the Trust Buster, was the first president of the Progressive Era. He enforced the Sherman Antitrust Act and Interstate Commerce Acts. He was influential in the Northern Securities case breaking up railroad monopolies. He was involved in preserving the environment, in creating a national park system to conserve nature's beauty, and in establishing the National Conservation Commission. He also passed the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906 and the Meat Inspection Act of 1906 to increase sanitation standards in the food industry. When it came to foreign policy, Teddy Roosevelt's belief was to speak softly but carry a big stick which came to be known as his big stick diplomacy. It was under Roosevelt that the Panama Canal was built. Remember, America got a lot of new territory from the Spanish-American War. To justify America's involvement in new territories, he had to modify the Monroe Doctrine, which in case you forgot state and European countries can't intervene in North and South America otherwise America would go to war with them. To modify Monroe Doctrine his corollary stated America had right to intervene in Western Hemispheres, but Europe was still not allowed to do so. 
Roosevelt handpicked William Taft as his next president who continued Roosevelt's reform policies. During his administration, the 16th Amendment was passed allowing government to collect income tax. Also during his administration, the 17th Amendment was passed which allowed for direct election of senators. Unfortunately, Taft's weak stance on the Payne Aldrich tariff which only slightly lowered taxes as opposed to the drastic lowering of taxes the public was looking for, led to the public disapproving Taft. Unlike Roosevelt's big stick policy, which was aggressive in international affairs, Taft was much more passive. Taft used dollar diplomacy with the hope of increasing trade in American-occupied regions and stabilized government while maintaining balance of power among American and foreign interests. Lastly, we have Woodrow Wilson who was a Democrat. He won the election of 1912 because the Republican vote was split. Roosevelt thought Taft was too conservative so he ran against him, but both Roosevelt and Taft were Republicans so this split the Republican vote allowing Wilson to swoop right in. Wilson took Roosevelt and Taft's policies a step further. Instead of regulating trusts, he abolished trust. The Clay and Nutty Trust Acts provided courts more power to regulate monopoly and made up for shortcomings of the weak Sherman Anti Trust Acts. Now let's start talking about World War I. Britain, France, and Russia made up the Allies. Germany, Austria Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire made up the Central Powers. President Woodrow Wilson wanted America to remain neutral during World War I. Although he wasn't directly involved with either party, he did lean more towards the Allies. Eventually, America joined the war on the side of the Allies due to two main reasons, unrestricted submarine warfare in the Zimmermann telegram. Germany declared unrestricted submarine warfare. Meaning Germany blew up ships within the war zone near Britain. In 1915, Germany destroyed the Lusitania which was a luxury passenger liner that had 128 Americans along with other ethnicities. Wilson told Germany to stop destroying ships, and Germany agreed for a while. So Wilson ran his second president with the slogan he kept us out of the war. Meaning Wilson basically kept America out of World War I. However, in 1917 Germany, recontinued its submarine warfare contributing to America joining the war. The second reason the America entered the war was the interception of the Zimmermann telegram. The Zimmermann telegram was a top secret, coded message sent by German Foreign Minister Arthur Zimmermann to his country's diplomatic delegation in Mexico in 1917. The communication was an attempt to draw Mexico into warfare should the United States join the Allies in Europe. The interception and decoding of the Zimmermann telegram revealed a promise to the Mexican government that Germany would help Mexico recover the territory it had ceded to America following the Mexican-American War. The Zimmermann telegram sparked nationwide outrage during World War I and helped to bring about American participation in the Great War. America joined in 1917, and the war ended soon after in 1918. Once the war ended, Wilson offered his 14 points plan. The 14 points plan was Wilson's peace plan designed to prevent future wars. All 14 points were compromised at the Paris Peace Conference in 1919 and the only point that remained was the 14th point on the formation of the League of Nations. Wilson although invented the League of Nations, he couldn't convince Congress to join the League of Nations. In Paris, the Treaty of Versailles was created establishing the League of Nations. Central powers in Russia weren't allowed and the League in America also did not join because Congress didn't want to. The Treaty of Versailles was tough on Germany. Germany had to give up land to the Allies, reduce its army, give war reparations, and accept blame for the war by the Guilt Clause or Clause 231. Germany suffered a lot as a result of the Treaty of Versailles and led to its destruction, which is how Hitler came to power in the 1930s and 1940s. Next we will discuss the Roaring Twenties. 1G Harding won presidency with the motto of returning to normalcy. This meant having peace in America again, and unfortunately it also meant returning to corruption of the Gilded Age. The Teapot Dome scandal is the most important proof of corruption in which the Secretary of Interior took bribes to allow certain oil companies drilling rights. Harding's administration loosely enforced the reform bills of the Progressive Era, so it was a reverse in progress during the Progressive Era. When it came to international affairs, Harding chose to practice isolationism. The 18th Amendment called for prohibition or outlawing of alcohol as supported by the Volstead Act. Women and religious leaders were proponents of the 18th Amendment. This led to underground smuggling of alcohol. The 19th Amendment was also passed in the 20s which granted women suffrage or right to vote. This was largely moved forward by Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. A movement called Black Nationalism started under the leadership of Marcus Garvey. He espoused a Back to Africa plan and rejected the racial integration one. His plan failed and at the same time members of the KKK increased because blacks were getting more and more rights. Since the turn of the century, thousands of people came to America. 
with Europe in shambles after World War I, more Europeans were coming to America so America had to put up immigration quotas limiting the number of people entering from 1919 to 1960s. Basically during this time Europeans couldn't come to America, which was not good during World War II when a lot of Jews were trying to escape to America to flee the Holocaust. The Russian Revolution happened in 1917, which led to Russia becoming communist. America hated communism and was in constant fear of Russian spies coming to America and corrupting society during the 1920s. The Red Scare is the hysteria that resulted because of America's preoccupation with Russian spies. Attorney General Mitchell Palmer conducted the Palmer Raids where he violated constitutional rights to arrest suspected communists in America. Also in the 1920s, the Scopes Monkey Trial of 1925 occurred where a high school biology teacher was taken to court for violating the Butler Act. The Butler Act prohibited teaching evolution in school. Scopes lost the case but his lawyers overturned the case due to technicalities. Since there were so many restrictions that took place during the 1920s like immigration quotas, prohibition, Palmer raids, and banning evolution. Many of the novelists chose to move to Europe and this group is called the Lost Generation so they could express themselves how they wish. Hemingway's The Sun also rises. Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, and Eliot's The Wasteland are examples of masterpieces written by the lost generation. The Harlem Renaissance also happened during the 1920s. It was a result of African Americans thriving in the arts, in particular jazz. Jazz was born in the 1920s. Lastly, you should remember Henry Ford, he created the assembly line in the 1920s making production more efficient, he created the Ford Model T his assembly line allowed for cars to be sold for cheaper prices and made them more affordable. Now, let's discuss the Great Depression and the New Deal. The 1920s experienced a lot of growth and productivity. Unfortunately, the 1930s weren't as lucky. On Black Tuesday, the stock market crashed on October 29, 1929 ushering in the Great Depression, which was riddled with business failures, unemployment, and inflation. Although the stock market crash was the main reason for the Great Depression, other factors contributed as well. Expenses of World War I, shady banking policies, decline in trade, and rise of borrowing credit also contributed to the Great Depression. Herbert Hoover was president during the Great Depression and he believed in laissez-faire economic ideology where the government stays out of the economy and does not regulate. Hoover left recovery up to individual initiative, as a result of Hoover not taking action Hoover was sprang up which were communities of rundown shacks where homeless people lived. In 1932 the public hated Republicans because Hoover was a Republican and wasn't doing anything to help the people get out of the depression, so they naturally elected a Democrat who was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. FDR's reform policies were part of his New Deal plan to get the country out of depression. During his first 100 days in office he wanted to give Americans relief by passing legislation to help businesses and agriculture. He wanted to reform the banks to ensure stability. He spent money to return to prosperity. His New Deal brought about minimum wage, unemployment insurance, and social security. Next, we'll move to World War II. Himmler rose to power in Germany and Mussolini rose to power in Italy. Germany violated the Munich Conference by invading Poland in 1939, which prompted Britain and France to declare war on Germany. America wanted to remain neutral, but that of course didn't happen. Congress wanted to make sure America doesn't get involved, so they passed the Neutrality Act, which forbade selling weapons and forbade citizens to travel on ships of countries at war. They did this so they wouldn't have to go through what they had to do in World War I where they were forced to go to war. In 1939, Neutrality Acts were amended to allow sale of weapons on a cash and carry basis which meant they could buy weapons from America but had to ship it themselves. Later, in 1941, the Lynn Lease Act basically expanded the power of the president to buy, sell, exchange to get weapons and supplies to nations that served the interest America, meaning the Allies. FDR also gave the military authority to shoot German submarines which was not typical of a country trying to practice isolationism. FDR eventually dies during presidency and Harry Truman took over. Truman took America to the conclusion of the war. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor forcing America to join World War II on the side of the Allies. FDR won his third and fourth terms as president under the notion it would be dangerous to change presidencies during a Great Depression and possibly a Second World War. The home front is a term used to describe the jobs of everyday Americans in America. Support for World War II was high with Americans because they felt threatened by Japan. Women entered the workforce to make up for the shortage in labor with men joining the military. A woman who went to work was given the nickname Rosie the Riveter. There was also rationing of meat and sugar amongst other items needed for the military during World War II. In 1945, the Allied troops captured Berlin and the Allies won the war. 
Remember the Allies consisted of Britain, France, Russia, and America. Also remember Russia was communist and America was a democracy, and they both hated each other. When it came time to divide the land gained from World War II, Germany was split down the middle in Berlin. The Berlin Wall was erected on which the east side was communist and the west side was democratic. Lastly, the Nuremberg Trials took place in which Nazis were prosecuted for crimes against humanity. Of course the crimes against humanity was the Holocaust, 